So, so talk us through uh, the, the quarter. I mean, we're mentioning the shares are down, but of course, down, down less than, than some rivals. Are, are you seeing a, a trade off in engagement and, uh, and trading activity? Really not seeing much of a much of a change from a client engagement standpoint. I've I've been uh, sitting in this chair now for my 14th year. I suppose my timing is bad. I should I should do closing bell more on all the times that we had an earnings beat than a than an earnings miss. But I think it's important to put things in context that uh, we still grew revenue uh, 13% year over year. Our, our net income expanded by 22% when you adjust for our one-time costs related to the Ameritrade uh, uh, acquisition and expanded our margin by almost 300 basis points. So it was an outstanding quarter uh, from a financial standpoint. And, and I think when you look at client engagement, we, we were uh, uh, fortunate. Our clients entrusted us with about $80 billion in net new money in December alone. So, so when you look at virtually any aspect of the, of the quarter and the year, it was, uh, it was simply outstanding. But, uh, but we did miss the estimates that analysts make by a couple of cents this quarter. Yeah, and, and your share price performance has been has been fabulous on, on most uh, short and medium term time frames uh, looking backwards. And, and clearly that's a factor as well. You, you mentioned uh, still seeing inflows from clients. What is their, their positioning at the moment? Are cash balances high? And what are your forecasts for, for how you're going to be able to monetize that if, if, an, uh, if rates keep rising? Well, I think clients are still very engaged in the market. Uh, they're uh, they're managing their money in a in a manner that has been fairly consistent uh, since the uh, since the pandemic began almost two years ago. There there are those who actively trade and and view that as an effective strategy, and there are those who do it very well. Uh, the majority of our clients are longer term investors, uh, either on their own or working with a independent advisor or getting advice uh, from Schwab. And, and what we see is them staying with their strategies as, uh, as they have in place. Not, not any big change, not any big shifts from an, uh, from an asset allocation standpoint, but rather uh, designing a plan and, uh, and staying with it. The other big theme, while well, we've been talking about, is interest rates going up and the Fed changing its tune. You know, a lot of, a lot of the banks are seemingly the big beneficiaries like a Bank of America from those higher rates. But you guys also should benefit, right, from higher margins. What, what's your rate sensitivity? If we see three or four rate hikes from the Fed, what does that do to your business? Well, it definitely generates some meaningful revenue for us as, uh, as you get into multiple rate hikes. Of course, we're, we're now waiving a, uh, a large amount of fees from our money market products to ensure our clients have a positive yield. Uh, those will all go away with a rate hike or two. Um, maybe more importantly, our clients will generate more uh, interest on their money fund balances, so that's a good thing for our clients. From a balance sheet standpoint, uh, higher rates will, in time, uh, filter their way through our balance sheet, uh, widen our spreads, and, uh, and the numbers can be quite significant uh, for us from a revenue standpoint. Um, I think uh, the the offset for our clients is that as rates go up, uh, they'll want to watch very carefully their asset allocation and, uh, and, and see how the equity markets perform uh, during a period of raising uh, rates that we haven't had, at least at this level, in quite a while.